Your Excellency Faluhut, Coordinating Minister for Maritime Affairs and Investment. Your Excellency Ipu Siti, Minister for Environment and Forestry. Your Excellency John Kerry, the United States Special Presidential Envoy for Climate. Ladies and gentlemen, Selamat Baki. It's my great pleasure to be with you this morning and talk about the challenge of our times, climate change. By 2050, climate change can force over 250 million people to move within their own country. And in the next 10 years, it can force over 150 million people into poverty. Indonesia ranks among the top third of countries in the world for climate risk. This beautiful country faces a high exposure to flooding, extreme heat, and rising sea levels. And unless action is taken, Indonesia's climate risks will continue to intensify and hit the poorest the hardest, leading to a significant economic costs estimated at two and a half to seven percent of GDP. That is massive. This means that no action is not an option. There are no winners if we continue business as usual, only losers. Global emissions need to be reduced now if we are to avoid the worst impacts of climate change. This will take significant multilateral collaboration across all countries and also finance. And we all need to do our part. Governments, the private sector, communities, households, individuals. This is our shared global challenge. With the second longest coastline in the world and one of Earth's most biologically diverse landscape, Indonesia is well positioned to lead the mitigation and adaptation agenda. The World Bank applauds the government of Indonesia for its efforts so far. We are particularly encouraged by the ambitious target to achieve carbon neutrality in the forest and land use sector by 2030. And by Indonesia's commitment to the world's largest mangrove rehabilitation program with the aim to rehabilitate 600,000 hectares of mangroves in four years. This is important because mangroves are a big carbon sink. We welcome the recent adoption of a carbon tax and look forward to the presidential decree, which will enable further adoption of other carbon pricing instruments, such as the emission trading scheme. The government has also established a moratorium for new coal-fired power plants as of 2023 and announced a schedule for closure of all coal-fired power plants by 2050 and with that a shift to renewable energy. These are all important actions and we need to take a note of. With the support of 83 billion US dollars in the past four years, the World Bank is the largest multilateral funder of climate investments in developing countries. In Indonesia, we actively support government's efforts to transition to a low carbon economy through technical assistance, support and investments. These activities include uh, clean energy, promoting sustainable land landscape management, including mangroves rehabilitation, sustainable oceans management, and climate finance mobilization. We are working closely with the Ministry of Environment and Forestry to pay for the forest conservation and reduction in greenhouse gas emissions in East Kalimantan. 
What Indonesia has already achieved there could result in the largest emission reduction payment in the whole world. Mitigating impacts of climate change is not easy. However, with cooperation from all of us, it is possible. So let's continue working together to save the beauty of Indonesia and to save our planet. Terima kasih banyak.